Hello everyone, I'm going to introduce you IEI Ladatis innovation product, QDS Gateway. So on my right hand, this is our IEI Embedded System, Tank 860. It has three different kind of SKU. It has two and four and six expansion slot. Each one supports different numbers of PCIe and PCI slot. So this year, IEI collaborated with QNAP that combine our hardware and QNAP software resource to bring you QTS Gateway. QTS Gateway is a software which can be used at the most of IEI hardware solution. So today, I'm going to show you how to set up QTS Gateway when customer just get their product. And when you see a Tank XCT QGW, the only difference between the standard product and the QTS SKU is Q Tank XCT QGW has a USB dome which already pre-installed in the machine. The USB dome has QTS Gateway's firmware. So when you get your product, just plug in Ethernet port, adapter and monitor and power it on. So next, I will show you how to install and follow by the step. There are two ways to install QTS Gateway. One is from local side, the other one is from intranet. Today I'm going to show you how to install QTS Gateway from intranet. First, you can download QFinder from internet or and website. After you install QFinder, just click it. This app will help you to find and search how many NAS device you have in intranet. And there's a windows will pop out. This pop out windows just show you the NAS we are going to install today. So you just click yes and it will guide it will lead you to the installation guide. So here's the first step, first page you when you start installation guide. Uh, there's a bar star smart installation guide, just click it. On the first page, you can name your NAS and set out a password. So here, I will just set out a password as admin. And I click next. And on date and time, I will just follow the default settings. Synchronize with an internet time server automatically. And I will click next. On network, configure the network setting. I will just set the DHCP to assign IP address automatically. So I'll click next. On service, just I'll just follow the default Windows. So I'll click next. Here, on disk, the default setting is click uh, click configure disk later. So I will unclick it. You can click it or unclick it because uh, when you click it, you can set up later when whole system setup completed. So I will unclick it here. So there are three volume type here. Static volume, fake volume, and thin volume. So static volume. Stat static volume will take up all of available space within the storage pool is pre-allocate and pre-prepare the space for optimal read and write access. Since static volume takes up all of the storage pool space, you cannot create multiple volume within the same pool. And second, thick volume. Thick volume offers a combination of a space flexibility and performance. You can choose how much space to assign to a thick volume from the storage pool. This means you can create multiple thick or thin volume within the same storage pool. Once the desired thick volume size has been chosen, and pre prepare the space for read and write access. And third, thin volume. Thin volume Thin provision allows storage space to be used more flexibly. Thin volume does not accurately use physical storage space during volume creation. Rather, physical space is only used during write allocation. This means you can provision a thin volume size that is larger than your physical storage size. You can create multiple thin volume within the same storage pool due to thin volume space flexibility.
there is a performance impact during workload. So I'll just choose thick volume. So uh, I will click both hard drive because I can choose red zero and one. Now I'll just choose red one. So uh, you also can set a snapshot reserve space. I'll just follow the default 20%. So you just click next. Here's a summary of all your settings. So when ready, just click apply and the install will be started.